Hi, I'm Piano Man Steve Lundgren, and I have a quick question for you. Did you know that there's five simple steps that you can follow to play any song you want on piano without ever having to read notes on a page? Well, there are, and I want to show them to you in this video. Now, over the last decade, I've worked with thousands of piano players from around the world as I've been teaching piano online through my videos, and I've observed something. A lot of them get themselves very, very psyched out about playing songs because they're reinventing the wheel on every one. And they're looking for a song tutorial for every song. And they're looking for sheet music on every song. And every single time, they're trying to box themselves into playing it exactly the same way. Which, by the way, popular songs are not played the same way every time. They're played similarly, but never the same way. There's always flexibility in pop music. That's part of what makes it pop music. But they're looking for that one perfect way to play it, and they're having to start the thing over from scratch every time. And the way that people who successfully play this kind of music do it is they have transferable skills. They put tools in their musical toolbox that they draw from all the time. And so they're never reinventing anything from scratch because, as a matter of fact, they're always just using techniques that they've already perfected. And as a result, people like me are never psyched out about learning something new because I know that 80% of the work is already done. It's the last 20% that makes the song unique that just makes it fun to learn. So what I want to do is show you my five-step formula that I still use every time I learn a new song. And then, hopefully, you'll be able to apply it in your own practice. And the only thing that might stop you from that is if you don't know some of the individual components in the five steps, and we'll talk about that. But there's easy remedies for that. There's a lot of free teaching online. You can buy my course, you can buy somebody else's course, but you'll know now what components you need, the building blocks to use this five-step formula. So whether you use my course or somebody else's, you can use this five-step formula to start learning your favorite songs in minutes. It should never take you longer than five to ten minutes tops to actually have a credible version, at least an accompaniment version, of one of your favorite tunes. It never should take any longer than that. Never. Never, never, never. And it won't when you use this five-step formula. Okay? So, what are the five steps? Step number one, go get the chords. Step number two, go find the song. Step number three, press play and listen to the song. Step number four, establish your essential rhythm pattern. And step number five, make it more interesting by adding some fun and simple improv techniques. Okay, let's break that down. What do I mean by these things? Step number one, go get the chords. Well, in the world that we live in today, that's actually very easy. You go to a Google search and you type in the name of the song and the word chords and a slew of different options are going to pop up with the lyrics to the song and chord symbols above them. Now, if you don't know what chord symbols are, you've probably seen it in piano sheet music before and just never knew what it was. Most people think they're there just for guitar players, okay? But it's not just for guitar players. You can use chord symbols as a piano player. So above the staff with all the ledger lines and whatnot, you have things like C, A minor, G7, that kind of stuff. Those are the chords. And when you learn how to read chord symbols, which by the way is ten times faster and easier to learn to do than to read notes on a page, when you learn how to read chord symbols, you can ignore the staffs and just pay attention to those. And what's great is that when you look up the chords on the internet, they don't even have the staff in front of you to confuse you. They just put the chord symbol above the lyrics. And the lyrics become your reference for where that chord change happens. So, if you don't know how to play chord symbols or read chord symbols yet, get my course, get somebody else's course, look it up for free somewhere, but learn how to identify chord symbols because once you get that in your back pocket, then suddenly playing songs is a very, very quick endeavor. Number two, go find the song. Well, again, we live in an incredible time. You can go find the song for free. Look it up on YouTube. Look it up on Spotify. Look it up on Pandora. Look it up on Amazon Music Prime. 
there's a bunch of different places where you can go get it at no cost to you, except you might have to sit through an ad every once in a while. Or you can buy their subscription service for 10 bucks a month or whatever it is, and you don't have any ads, and you can find about any song that's ever been made. It's a fantastic option. So go find the song. Step number three, listen to the song. Okay, well that's pretty easy. You push play. You know how to do that. Step number four, we establish the essential rhythm pattern. Now, a rhythm pattern is how you take your hands and you approximate what's going on with the band with your hands. Your left hand sort of approximates the drums and the bass. Your right hand approximates the guitars, the keys, all of that. Maybe even the singers if you want to play melody in the right hand. So, it's what you do with them together. We call it a rhythm pattern. Okay, And there are four that I've been able to discern four essential, simple rhythm patterns that pretty much every pop song ever written is going to fall into one of those categories and work. And just quickly, I'll show you what they are. Okay, I call this one the basic feel. I call this one the syncopated feel. This one, the country feel. And I call this one the waltz feel. Okay, now I don't have time to show you exactly how to play all of those in this video, but again, I teach them. They're very simple to learn. I teach them in my in my course, The Piano Man Approach, but even if you want to come up with your own rhythm patterns, the simple fact of the matter is you've got the chords in front of you and you use them while you're listening to the song to come up with some way for your hands to approximate the feel of that song. What I like about the four essentials is that they're a great place to start because then there's a bunch of different fun variations that you can do on each of those four essential rhythm patterns that they are built on this simple thing that we just did and they continue to do the essence of what this simple thing just did but they give you all kinds of depth and nuance and fun different directions that you can go with any particular song but it always gives you that nice simple place to start your journey and that's still what i do after all this time i never read music on a page i never ever almost i can't remember the last time i ever even looked at a youtube tutorial all i do is i sit down with the chords if i need them because my ears gotten pretty good <laughs> this method actually trains your ear pretty well and i sit down and i find the basic rhythm pattern and then i just start coming up with fun variations from there let me give you an example or two in the basic rhythm pattern where you're playing just quarter notes in the left hand like this If I were to play the chord pattern G, F, C, G, I could do something like Taking Care of Business by Bachman Turner Overdrive, or even uh, Born This Way by Lady Gaga works with this. Dance beats work real well with quarter notes under your under your hand. So you might take that that chord progression. It's very simple and I say and I'll be taking care of business every day taking care of business every way okay so now once I have the thing mastered like that now it's time for variations and simple improv stuff and I teach a bunch of those in my course too but let's just say for for fun that what I'm gonna do for some improv is occasionally toggle meaning I'm playing a chord like this with my right hand, and I'm going to play part of it with these two fingers, and then toggle to the thumb and back. Da 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 da. Okay. And I'll be taking care of business every day, taking care of business every way. Okay. Lady Gaga. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. I'm on the right 
trick, baby, I was born this way. Da 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 Okay, now that's just very, very simple stuff. There's so many different things you can do, but the simple fact is, as you play around with different variations, a bunch of which I teach in my course, and a lot of other great piano teachers have different variations and improv things that they teach too. But as you start building simple improv things on top of other simple improv things, they become complex. And this very simple turns into something like this. So that's where it all starts. Both of those songs, I started by learning the essential rhythm pattern, mastering it that way, and then once I had the song under my fingers with that very, very simple run through the chords, then I started finding fun variations. Now here's the great part of it. Within five minutes, you're already playing a decent sounding version of the song, just by playing the essential rhythm pattern and the chords. But now you have like the whole rest of your life to keep making it more fun and more cool. And it doesn't have to take you the rest of your life, but I'm saying that no matter how many techniques you learn today or tomorrow or next week or next month, you're going to keep discovering new things the whole rest of your life as a player. You're going to discover things from teachers like me. You're going to have happy accidents on the piano yourself. You're going to be playing along with stuff that you've already learned and you're going to accidentally do something and go, well, that was cool. And then you're going to do it again on purpose. And the next thing you know, that becomes a signature lick for you. And you didn't even know you were looking for one. It just kind of happens. That's what playing the piano is like. The whole rest of your life, you're going to keep discovering new fun improv techniques, new fun variations on these things. And like I say, I teach a lot of variations on rhythm patterns and I teach a lot of fun uh, licks and fills and improv techniques, but I can't know everything that everyone ever might come up with. So I teach dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, but you're still going to discover a bunch more either from other teachers or just watching another player or just happy accidents yourself. This method allows you to keep putting those new things that you learn the rest of your life into the music that you love to play. It's the coolest thing ever. Whereas when you get a piece of sheet music, first of all, you have to master reading music, which is the longest, slowest, most difficult way to play music that there is, particularly piano, because you have to play two staffs at the same time, bass and treble. But you're stuck playing it the same way. There's no room. It's telling you very rigidly, this is how it must be done. But that's not creativity. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's not, that's not what it's all about. So the great thing about this is that very quickly it gets you playing it in a fun and satisfying way, but you get to be creative going forward. And as you become a better player, you just play it better. And you have all kinds of fun new ideas. And the essence of the song is always there. And then, yes, this is the one time that I might use sheet music or I might use a YouTube tutorial is if there's a specific signature line. Okay? If you're playing Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me by Elton John, you might want to make sure that you're doing this. spot in the song, the rest of the song, you're better off to just use chords and rhythm patterns and improv techniques. It'll sound more true to the song. So it's, it's fun to go and get some precision with some of those uh, signature lines here and there, but that isn't how I get the bulk of my songs. So it's kind of funny because a lot of you probably have seen my song tutorials on the internet 
which I do put them on YouTube sort of as a public service here or there, I don't like doing them. And I don't like my students relying on them because in almost every one of those songs, there's usually about this much of the song that's worth learning that way. And the rest of the song, they should just be using this five-step formula for. Because I guarantee you that's how the artist that recorded it came up with the part in the first place, and it's how they're doing it on stage. So, really, really fun, and this will unlock literally thousands of songs. So, what can you take away from this video? These five steps will have you playing about any song, at least to some decent level, in five to ten minutes. However, you do have to know how to read chords, and you should know something about rhythm patterns. And then you've got to have some knowledge of simple improv techniques. All of which are way, way easier to learn than you might think they are. And they all build on each other. Once you learn how to play chords, it's really easy to plug them into the four essential rhythm patterns. And the best improv techniques are not crazy ones that go all the way up and down the piano like that. They are built right on the chord, your hand is already on. So, it's, it's very simple stuff. I would invite you, if you're interested at all in this, check out the Piano Man Approach free webinar below because it goes into a little bit more detail about how all this works and what I teach. And if you're interested, then of course you can check out the Piano Man Approach. But more importantly, just know, five simple steps get you to play any song any song. It's pretty cool stuff. So, hope you've enjoyed this video, and if it's piqued your curiosity, there's a lot more resources that you can check out to get more information. So, I'm going to get out of here for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Piano Man Steve Lundgren, and remember, if you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong.